OK, folks, so here is the next 12 mark assess exam question. So it says this, assess the methods used in local communities to reduce the impact of globalization on the environment. So as we know, <clears throat> every 12 mark exam question will always have the command word assess. And what we're going to do now is break down this question, look at its component parts, link it to the exam spec and the mark scheme, and then think about the sort of content that you might want to use to answer a question such as this. <clears throat> OK, so if we now refer over to the level three mark band of the mark scheme, which is worth nine to 12 marks, these different aspects need to be included within a 12 mark assess answer. So understanding is your first one. You need to show an understanding of your geographical theory, factors and reasons. Balance in your answer. Now, this is um, particularly important with an assessed question because this is where you put in priority order with the most significant factor or reason or effect, whatever it is, first, right down to the least significant in the end paragraph. Now, obviously, accuracy, you need to be an you need to be accurate in all that you say and write in the exam with the reasons, the factors, the theory and case studies and data that you use to back up your case studies. Um, in a 12 mark assessed question, you are showing your knowledge of theory, factors, reasons again. And again, that's very closely linked to understanding and evidence. This is where you need to be bringing in case study examples with use of data, figures and place specific detail to support your explanation. And finally, relevance. Everything that you say must be relevant and answering the question. OK, so let's jump into the structure and breakdown of the essay question. So as you will should know by now, every 12 mark assess question and 20 mark evaluate question needs to start with a short introduction. And the introductions are where you define the key terms associated with the question. Now, if you have a look and maybe pause this and think about the key terms that are associated with the question that you might want to define. So the first one has got to be globalization. It appears in the actual question itself. So a nice, concise definition of what globalization is. Now, what I then want to do is focus down more on the environmental part of the question. So maybe defining sustainability, because whenever we're looking at the impact on the environment and we're trying to look at methods to reduce that impact, we're, we're therefore thinking about sustainability. So I, I do feel a definition of sustainability is needed here. Now, the third one is optional, um, very closely linked to sustainability in the environment is the ecological footprint of people. The, the, the individual effects that each person has on the environment as a result of their actions. Now, this next part is optional in a question like this because the question is talking about the impacts of globalization on the environment, you might want to very briefly outline one or two of the main causes of these environmental impacts as a result of globalization. For example, the growth of consumption. Um, we as, as humanity are consuming more food as the middle class grow, water and fuel, which then closely links into increased emissions of greenhouse gases. And again, all of that combined has impacts on the environment and all are linked to globalization. But as I say, those causes are optional. If you do talk about the causes in your introduction, make it brief because you need to save plenty of space and time to delve into answering the actual question. So paragraph one in an assess 12 marker needs to be the most important method as a result of a local measure. So the most important method to reduce the impact of globalization on the environment. Now, I would do this method. You don't have to, you may have a different one. <clears throat> so I would focus down on ethical consumerism. Now, that was towards the last part of the globalization unit where you looked at local sourcing of products. So local food sources, buying local, encouraging people to buy local products and food. 
So therefore, sourcing that food from a local destination rather than increasing your food miles and, and, you, and consuming food that has travelled a larger distance. And another good example within here is the use of urban gardens to grow crops and vegetables and so on. Now, you need to bring in an example. A good example the textbook has, which you would have looked at, is the Todd Morden Transition Town. So what you're doing in this paragraph is peeling. You're making your point related to ethical consumerism as a consumerism as a local method. You're explaining it through those four bullet points in the center there. And then you're backing it up with an example, a piece of evidence example and linking it back to the question. <clears throat> so paragraph two is going to be the second most important method as a result of local measures to reduce the impact on the environment. Now, again, this is my suggestion. You may think this is more important or less important. I would focus on the local promotion and involvement in fair trade. Now, fair trade is very much a global method. So if you're going to use this, you need to bring it down to the local level. And this is where local people in small scale areas reduce their purchases of products from large transnational corporations. Um, now, TNCs often offer a variety of products, food, clothing and so on. Now, if we are promoting the use of fair trade or the buying of fair trade on a local level, what we're doing there is we're, we're, we're providing the workers in developing nations with more money, more technology, more education to improve their production practices and therefore reducing the impact upon the environment. So you can see the link there. Now, an example, I, I would actually use two examples here. First of all, to show the damage that a large TNC that isn't fair trade can have on the environment and local people. And there you could use the Rana Plaza example in Bangladesh. But then you've got to bring in there an example to show local fair trade involvement. And that's where you could look at the Waitrose Foundation. And then what you're basically doing is peeling. You're making your point, local promotion, involvement in fair trade. You're explaining it in general geographical terms first. And then you're bringing in your example examples. And your final paragraph. This is the least most important method. Now, again, you may feel this is more important than what I put it as, and rightly so, maybe. I'm looking at local transport policies. It's a nice, easy um, method to reduce the impact on the environment. And the, really, looking at traffic calming measures, methods that to reduce emissions at a more local scale. Because as we know, people are using more transport because easier access to transport, improving wealth, and that's all the result of globalization. Now, the example I would use are the transport calming measures and emission reducing methods in Cambridge. And again, what you're doing here is peeling, you're making the point with regards to local transport policies, you're then explaining it in general about the traffic calming, the reducing emissions and so on at a local scale. And then your example evidence through Cambridge. Link it all back to the question at the end. And to get you thinking about your final paragraph, your conclusion, just pause a second. Hopefully some of you are saying to yourself, we don't need a conclusion for a 12 mark assess question. If you are, you are correct. You do not have a conclusion for a 12 mark assess question. You've done the job. You've outlined your three priority statements, reasons, factors, methods, fully explained and with examples. You do not need to waste time or space writing a conclusion. So continue practicing, everybody. Um, maybe use this as one of your submissions for the fortnight and good luck.